Welcome to this video series, where we explore the world of WebDriver.io to help you succeed in your test automation career. Hello, my name is Marco Cruz, and I'm the founder of Automate Now, and I'm excited to team up with Lambda Test to bring you these awesome videos. My background is in computer engineering, and I have over a decade in software testing experience. You can learn more about my company by heading over to AutomateNow.io, and you can also find us on YouTube by searching Automate Now. In this video, we're going to talk about how synchronization works in WebDriver.io. We're also going to take a look at what implicit and explicit weights are. And lastly, we're going to see how to handle dynamic elements. Let's dive in. Here are some key points about weights in WebDriver.io. First of all, you should know that there is automatic weighting for WebDriver.io, meaning that if it's trying to find an element, it's not going to give up automatically. It's going to wait a certain amount of time before it gives up trying to find that element or before it throws an error. For humans, that's not a problem. We simply wait for the page to load, for the element to show up. But for the computer, it needs to know, okay, how long do I need to wait for this element to show up? Or for how long do I need to wait for the page to load? So this is very important functionality that is already built into WebDriver.io. So it's great knowing that we don't have to worry about that. However, there are some scenarios in which you may need to wait a little bit longer for certain things to happen. And that's not a problem for WebDriver.io because we're able to customize how long the wait needs to be for any given scenario. Now, there are two different types of weights that you can use. You can use implicit weights or explicit weights. It is recommended that you do not use implicit weights. Implicit weights are used to apply global wait times. For example, if you're trying to find elements, it's always going to wait a certain amount of time. It's important to note that both of these methods, implicit and explicit weights, are incompatible. So you're going to run into issues if you ever try to use them together because you're going to face longer than expected wait times. And what you should know about implicit weights is that it applies a global weight for all elements for any web driver IO action. So instead of using that, what we need to use is explicit weights so that we can have weights at a specific point. For example, when you're trying to wait for an element to exist on a page or for an element to be visible. And that's why web driver IO has this value set to zero by default. They don't want you to use implicit weights. Instead, they want you to use explicit weights. And by default, the wait time is 10 seconds, meaning that if you're trying to find an element, it's going to wait up to 10 seconds for that element to show up. But as I mentioned earlier, you have the option to configure that amount of time that you want to wait for elements or other actions. Before moving on to some code examples, let's talk about async and await. You've seen me using this before, and now is the time for you to learn why it is important to use these two keywords when you're writing tests. And here you can see a sample test, which we wrote before. This test is simply searching for a product on a website. Here's the URL that we're going to, and this test hovers over in a menu and then selects a given item on that menu. Now, notice that we're using async right here, and we're using await over here every time that we're trying to find something or to interact with an element. Now, why do we use these two? Well, it's important to note that if you don't use these, your test will most likely fail. Why is that? Well, that is because the test is going to run through all of the commands that you have without waiting for the previous command to finish executing. Notice what happens here. First, we need to hover over a menu, and then we need to wait for the elements inside that menu to show up. So if we were to hover over the menu and not wait for the submenu items to show up before trying to click on one of those submenu items, then we would get an error. So this async and await is making sure that every command is executed one after another. Because if we don't do that, then the test is going to be out of sync. So I hope that makes sense for you. If it doesn't, think of, for example, when you're trying to log into an application. First, we provide the username, then the password, and then we click sign in, for example. Let's imagine that you're trying to put in the username and then put in the password. If we didn't have async and await in that scenario, then the test could potentially put in the username and then click sign in before putting in the password. So things will be completely out of sync. So we talked about the different weights. Now let's take a look at those weights inside of our project. So in the project, we have this file that we've seen before, wdio.conf.js. So let's open this one up. And here we can find the first timeout. It says, wait for timeout. And this is the explicit timeout that I was referring to earlier. Notice that the default value is 10,000. Since that is in milliseconds, we're really looking at 10 seconds. So WebDriver.io is going to automatically wait for elements to show up for up to 10 seconds. Keep in mind that this is a global timeout. So that basically applies for commands such as waiting for an element to exist or waiting for an element to be displayed and so on. 
Now, if we wanted to change this timeout, we can simply update the number right here. Okay, so we're going to change it, for example, from 10 seconds to 30 seconds. That's one example of how you can do it from here. Now, you also have the option to change it at the test level. So we can leave this here as the default value of 10. And when we go to our test, let's open up one of the tests over here. So let's say that we have this test right here. The test goes to this website, the Lambda Test Playground. That's the website right here. And then we go to Mega Menu, and then we select Headphones right here. So I'm going to change this up a little bit so that I can show you how to use explicit weights at the test level. So let me make some room over here. I'm going to comment out this line right here. Instead of clicking on it, now I'm going to wait for the element to just be visible. So let's go over here and we're going to create a constant. We're going to say const. We're going to call this headphones. Is equal to, and then we're going to say await. Then we use the dollar sign to find the element. And then we're going to paste this right here, the selector for that element. Then I can do the following. I can say await headphones dot wait for display, this one right here. So when WebDriver.io gets to this point right here, it is going to wait for that 10 seconds that we talked about, this right here. This is the explicit ways that we have. It's gonna wait up to 10 seconds for this headphones element to show up. Now, if I want to customize that amount of time, I can do that right here within this method. I can use a curly brace right here, and then I can say timeout, and then colon, and then I can specify a new timeout. So let's say I just want to wait one second. I can do 1000 right there. So instead of waiting 10 seconds now, it's only gonna wait one second. And this can be useful because sometimes you have scenarios in which you need to wait a little bit longer or a little bit less. One important thing to mention here is that explicit weights only work for single elements when you're trying to find a single element. So this is a perfect example right here. We're using a single dollar sign to find an element. It doesn't work when you're trying to find multiple elements. So for example, right here, I could use two dollar signs and then I could try to find some elements, for example, all the divs on a page. In that case, WebDriver.io is not going to respect this time that we set right here. It is going to fail immediately if it doesn't find any elements. Now let's talk about how long WebDriver.io waits for your test to run. So we know that if we leave a test running for a long time, at some point it is going to fail. And that is a good measure because we don't want long running tests. That's gonna take up resources on our system. Let me take you back to this file over here, WDIO config file. Now, here you have, in this case, Mocha options. Since my test framework is Mocha, that's why I see this right here. Now, notice that this says timeout 60,000. Now, that means that it's going to wait up to 60 seconds for a test to run. If any test happens to take anything longer than 60 seconds, then it's going to automatically fail the test. And of course, I have the option to change this number to any reasonable amount based on the application that I'm testing. The last thing that I want to talk about is something that is quite important because there are some elements on a website that are dynamic. For example, let's take a look at this website again. If I go here and I go to this menu and I select, for example, on mobiles and I say LGU here. Notice that I have different items that show up. Now, this is the price for these items. Now I can change the price of the items. So let's say I'm on the cheaper side, I want to go over here, nothing, let, nothing over say 650. Notice that as I change this slide over here, this elements over here refreshed or they got updated. Now, this is an example of Ajax working on a website. Instead of refreshing the entire website, it's only refreshing a certain section of the website. Now, for this type of elements, it's important to note that you have different strategies to wait for them using WebDriver.io. Here are some ideas on how you can handle this type of scenarios. When we have dynamic elements, we can use different commands. So for example, we have this one called wait until. An example for this would be waiting until an element contains a given text. You can also use wait for displayed. That's pretty obvious. You're just gonna wait for the element to be displayed on the screen. You also have wait for exists. Now we're gonna going to make sure that the element exists. This doesn't necessarily mean that the element is visible. We also have wait for clickable, wait for enabled, you also have the option to add more customization. For example, you can use custom expected conditions as well as fluent weights. Some examples of expected conditions could be waiting for the title of a page to be a given text or waiting for some URL to be present. And what fluent weights do is that they allow you to use a custom timeout as well as how often you're pulling the DOM for the presence of an element. So they are quite flexible.
Thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. Check out any of the links on the screen to get connected with the Lambda Test community, get certified, and get access to the code that you saw today. See you in the next video.